Hi, I'm Dr. Angela Yankee. And I'm Dr. Kathleen O'Neill-Smith. Welcome back to the Fire Em Up Doctors, Good Medicine Doctor Series. We are so glad you joined us. We want to provide you with credible health resources, guide you in your treatment options, and fire you up to take control of your health. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fire em Up Doctors webinar series. My name is Audrey Wells and I'm so excited to be your new co-host, especially for these upcoming weeks as we pivot from our body composition webinar series to our new COVID series. And so with that being said, I'm really excited to introduce our Fire em Up Doctors, Dr. Angela Ike and Dr. Kathleen O'Neill-Smith. Hi everybody. Hey everyone. We are so excited Audrey has taken the reins here as our host at, at this Fire em Up Doctor webinar series. And uh, we're together here. <laughs> what are we, here we doing? Are. What are we doing together? We're on retreat and we're working on so many projects. One, this project and how to help um, you all and what the topics will be from you know this month through next month and the months beyond. We're working on a book. We're working on a study on post-COVID syndrome. We are busy. But yeah. we are happily busy on the ocean, on the water. And so with that, uh, we really have been digging into the literature and decided to spend the next five weeks coming back to COVID. So this is our 2021 COVID series. Today, we're going to go back to the basics. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about prevention and getting back to our book, talking about fortifying your castle. The week after, post-exposure prophylaxis. So what do you do if you were accidentally exposed to COVID? The week after, after will be COVID illness management. And then finally, what we're going to use the term PACS, post-acute COVID-19 syndrome. It has other terms like long COVID or long hauler syndrome, but that's the one we're going to choose to use, PACS. And that's the clinical trial we're busy designing. Exactly. I think the key thing is that, you know, last week we, the vaccines are here. So now that the vaccines are here, there's a lot of questions around vaccines, around COVID syndrome what's an infection, what's not an infection. And we wanna be really clear about what we've learned by studying and moving forward, um, understanding COVID-19 over the last, what, 12 months, right? Absolutely. So, And, and getting to the vaccines, we've assembled a kick COVID-19 to the curb study group of uh, three MD PhDs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, three PhDs and ourselves and we've really been diligent studying the, at this point, the mRNA vaccines, which are the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines. And soon coming online will be the uh, DNA vaccines, Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca. So that we'll talk about later. But the vaccines are here and you all have so many questions. So many great patients. questions. Yeah, really great questions. And so um, I think we want to back it up in terms of talking about just the very basics and remember what the basics are as we get back to the vaccines, when we gather the data that allows us to feel comfortable about really who is the best candidate for this vaccine and under what circumstance. In addition, we've had so many questions about the genetic, uh, the mutant strains that are coming from um, the UK strain, for example, where you have most of the vaccines have to do with the spike protein, targeting the spike protein to make it antibodies. A lot of these genetic mutants actually have to do with changing the spike protein because just remember that, that the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes COVID-19, wants to survive. And so in order to survive, it needs to keep evolving itself to evade our immune system. And in addition, as we taught you way back in the day, it has to use our own cells to replicate itself. So one strategy on the virus's part is to keep mutating the spike protein. And so the three that are coming online, and I'd refer you to last week's CDC's morbidity and mortality report, if you're a science person, you wanna hear the details, are the ones coming from the United Kingdom, uh, which actually has, to, has more transmittability, and, but uh, hasn't, I, we haven't heard any difference in morbidity and mortality, but the UK 
strain is coming such that we think it's going to be the primary strain in the United States by March. Pretty soon, yeah, because it's very highly transmissible, meaning infectious. So it jumps from person to person, you know, much more rapidly. But one of the things I also want to say is that in general, it is very usual for viruses to develop mutations because as Dr. Iki noted, they want to survive. So they're gonna be constantly trying to you know, adapt, adapt in order to keep themselves alive. And it's like the flu vaccine as well. So it's not unusual, don't be afraid of that. What we're trying to understand is how transmissible is it? And is it also, is it also do you also get protection with the vaccine? Right. And so far, we think it's more trans transmissible, but there's no evidence that it's any more, you know, impactful in terms of morbidity. Yes. And it gets back to our point about regardless of what you're being attacked with, be it a mutant SARS-CoV-2 right. or the influenza A, B virus or something else, you still have to maximize and fortify your immune system, which is why we're talking about we're, we're finishing up our second book. Uh, called fine tune your immune system. So that's what we're doing down here. It's the only sensible thing to do. So no matter what, and we talked about this before, I remember distinctly the conversation on this webinar, your immune system has to be prepared for what we have here today, what you've been exposed to in the past and what you will be exposed to in the future. So it is very fundamental to your health span. So we want to be clear about that and we wanna help you understand once again with complete clarity because we're now you know, at another point in time with this virus about how you can do that. So it's taking an offensive <clears throat> ap approach instead of cowering back in a defensive approach saying, oh my goodness, there's a, a mutant strain from the United Kingdom. There's one coming from South Africa. There's one coming from South America. We don't want you to be fearful. We want you to take control of your health. That's right, that's correct. So um, next slide. So just a reminder, we thought over the next five weeks, we would actually talk in our analogy, which has been so useful in, in our day-to-day -day explaining to our own patients about the immune system. This analogy is especially helpful in the era of the vaccines, I think. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Because what you can see at the bottom with you on the left and all the way over dealt white blood cells, antigen presenting cells, T cells, B cells, antibody it's more complex than just a vaccine and antibodies. The immune system would never only have one mechanism for, for keeping you safe and keeping you protected. The immune system has multiple mechanisms. The vaccine works on the right side, the antibodies, but we need to think about our T cells, our B cells, our presenting cells, and our white blood cells. So there's a lot to be thinking about and that's why we're taking a step back and looking at this in the setting of now that the vaccine is here, does that mean we just get that vaccine and we're done? That's the question that we have to answer for you. Yeah, and then getting back to the basics. And again, I'm happy to say that that our guide, the Kick COVID-19 guidebook is ubiquitous now. It's on Amazon Kindle as a digital book. It's on Google Play. And our, our four hour and 30 minute audio book has been released on Audible. So if, if you want to really dig deeply into data that's still accurate. <laughs> it's all still accurate. Even though this Remarkably. was published several months ago, mm -hmm. um, we're going to be talking in these analogies. So let me just tell you a story. So you are the king of your castle. Okay. And it's really important, important that you fortify your castle, your body. You have a chess set or the immune system army that has different roles. And that's what we laid out in the book as well as this picture. The innate immunity cells such as neutrophils actually are the pawns. They're kind of expendable. Their first line, it's the pus. If you cut your hand, you'll see the pus, right? Inflammation, it kills bacteria and it causes clotting. That's the innate immunity or the white blood cells. You have the bishops, which are are innate immunity, but they actually converse with the more sophisticated immunity called the adaptive immunity. Those are the antigen presenting cells. Okay, and they're interacting directly. Yes, those are like the macrophages, right? Mm -hmm. And then the, the star in my book, I don't know if the star, you, what you guys think, but I love T cells. I think the T cells, actually you have natural killer T cells. They're like the queen, they've got a lot of power, they work quickly. And then you have T cells that differentiate and talk to the B cells, B mm -hmm. is in ball or boy. And we represented those as the knights, okay? Their repertoire, kind of like knights, they actually 
uh, deal with arrows and the arrows in this chess set analogy are the antibodies. And so that's why it's important to hone this analogy with you all is because when we talk about vaccines, it involves all of them, not just as Dr. Kathleen said, the B cells making antibodies, it involves T cells, antigen presenting cells. Uh, it's really important that we understand that how each of these work together and that we understand how do we fortify them? How do we make sure that we have adequate numbers of APCs, T cells, B cells, antibodies, white blood cells, and if they're low or if they're challenged by COVID-19, how do we boost them? And we can boost them. These have been studied. And then when we get into talking about autoimmune or autoinflammatory disease, we're going to harken back to chest set or immune confusion, where they actually, instead of going after the invader, they're, they're actually confused and going against themselves. And so really hearkening back to this story and kick COVID-19 to the curb of the chest set analogy and you as, a ch as the castle, protecting your castle is where we're gonna be talking over the next five weeks. Yeah, that has to do with the chronicity. When, when people end up with chronic um, microbes or chronic infections or chronic COVID, the PAC syndrome, post-acute COVID syndrome, um, absolutely that will be really important to understand how this happened because it will have more to do with the immune system and its response even though it's post-acute, even though the COVID has been cleared. It's not really about the infection anymore. It's now more about the immune system and that's a key point. One thing that I've, I've talked to with my patients even this week is they were like, you know, hey, Dr. Aki, I'm getting my vaccine. Can I stop all of my supplements now? <laughs> C, the CDOS protocol, C, D, omega-3, and zinc. And I said, no, no, no. What you're about to, you want to optimize yourself <laughs> for this vaccine. Even more important. <laughs> what you're going to experience because we're giving, your body's going to make the spike protein is you're going to experience full COVID. It'll feel like fake, it'll feel like COVID, but FAUX, faux COVID, your, your immune system Absolutely. Will, will have that experience. And sure enough, some of the adverse reactions of the over almost 500 adverse reactions out of what, 14 million uh, vaccines that have been given, only 500 have been reported at that VAERS site. But when we, when we looked at those adverse reactions, they were, oh, I got fever. I got arm pain, I got muscle aches. So it was like they were experiencing COVID. Yeah, for sure. Many, many, many people, the majority I think experience a symptom that feels like they're infected with COVID, a symptom or more. And that makes sense because you're making the spike protein so your immune system army is seeing it. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So as we go through the next several weeks, here's the uh, plan. Going back to the basics today, preventing, fortifying your castle, mobilizing your army for post-exposure. You've been exposed to COVID, you're not sick. What is the prophylaxis that you should be doing? It's like post-exposure with the vaccine. So we also want to look at if you become ill with COVID, how are you going to be managed? What are, what are you going to do for yourself to, to stay strong and beat this virus? And then Finally, we're going to go back to the PACs, the post-acute, after you've had the acute phase, two weeks, four weeks, you get a little bit better, but then you have some undulating, reoccurring symptoms. It could be fever, it could be insomnia, it could be shortness of breath, difficulty ambulating, walking, exertional shortness of breath, or any of those things. So we want to talk about how do you repair your castle or how do you repair your immune system so that it can become strong again. All of these things are possible. We are dynamic. We are not you know, the same any day, any hour of the day. We are dynamic, we are constantly changing and we're gonna help you understand how you can restore and rejuvenate. Yeah, and um, those symptoms, uh, the ones that I hear the most uh, actually are like brain fog. Cause I know many of you have already experienced COVID or is your brain coming online? Yeah. Memory, brain fog, concentration, fatigue energy in the afternoon, and then inability to sleep at night. It's really distressing for people. Absolutely. So we'd like to you know, present action steps every week and help you understand in very succinct ways and how you can manage in these different stages. Yeah, and really take control of your health, take a proactive stance. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So we're gonna give you some updates. We'll start with North Florida, next slide. Yeah, so you, you're used to this, um, 
formats. So basically confirmed in the United States, 24 million. In Florida, confirmed 1.6 million, almost 25,000 deaths. In Alachua County, where Gainesville is, where I live, uh, 19,000 confirmed, 156 deaths. Um, we've had over 80, 80 plus, closer to 90, because this week alone I've been managing about six COVID patients. Uh, only one death. And again, mid 80s with baseline interstitial pulmonary fibrosis. And so uh, the, these steps about being proactive and fortifying your immune system and intervening quickly, should you have had an exposure or start getting symptoms or the illness is really effective. It's very, very effective. And that's why we're going to come back to it. In Massachusetts, uh, we've had just under half a million total confirmed cases of COVID. And again, there's some confusion about that data and what that means. Are people sick or is it just a positive test? In terms of deaths, we've had just under 14,000 deaths. We are totally shut down in Massachusetts. I'm not a PCP, a primary care provider. I am more of a regenerative subspecialty provider. Um, and in my practice, we've had you know, probably 50, 50 patients with confirmed COVID. Um, we have not had any deaths, you know, specifically in my practice, but I have patients in the practice whose family members have died. So uh, it's a really big problem and we want to make sure that we help our frontline colleagues mitigate the number of people that they have to see and the decisions that they have to make around who gets care. So that's why we're talking to you about what you can do for yourself to strengthen and fortify your immune system. But I will say, you know, we've been very successful managing our populations through the pandemic in terms of lack of deaths. However, we are noticing post-COVID syndrome, Absolutely. which we're going to say PACS now, which is why we're going to spend so much time and energy designing a clinical trial to get to rescue those patients. It's really important because nobody's really studying PACS at this point in time. People are still trying to understand how to define it even. It is hard to define, but we've got to start somewhere and we actually have to help these people to mitigate, you know, their symptoms to get them back into the, you know, into everyday activity, but also also to prevent disease because we really are in the end, you know, about prevention. We want people to be healthy and have a wonderful health span. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So you know how we had the COVID disease tracker and now they have a vaccine tracker. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. You'll be seeing new slides, vaccines trackers. So really the EUA, the uh, emergency use authorization has only been granted to the two mRNA vaccines, the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. Anybody who didn't listen to last week's webinar, we spent the whole hour with Q and A yeah. on those vaccines. So I'll remind you of that. Um, and we referred you to the vaers.hhs.gov website to, if you wanted to look at the reported adverse reactions yourself, of which only less than 500 have been reported out of over 14 million doses given. However, we think that they're under, it's being underreported. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you think about 14 million doses given, and the way that they're given in terms of in a parking lot at a football stadium or wherever they're given, which is, it's great that they're getting out there. We believe that they should have the, use the vaccine and get it out there to the appropriate populations. Um, but we also think that we should be tracking. So, because we should really understand we're actively living the experiment of, you know, what is gonna happen with this. And that's why we're taking a step back, trying to understand what is post COVID syndrome, how bad is it, what goes on with COVID and then who are the appropriate people that absolutely must have a vaccine. Yeah, and this is like living a phase four clinical trial, right? Because it's out there in the community. So we really Same do process. need to be studious about reporting if there is if there are adverse reactions or problems, especially in populations that were not specifically included or they were excluded. Um, for example, complicated older medical patients were some of them were excluded based on some conditions, but they're now getting vaccines. So we now have to see if there are problems with that. Right. We definitely have to be astute. So in Florida, uh, 1.1 uh, 1 million total doses, which is 5,240 per 100,000. So 0.5% of the Florida population fully vaccinated. And I'm just gonna remind you of the data. So with the Pfizer vaccine, 
and the Moderna vaccine both say after two weeks after completion of the series, you get about 95% protection. Um, after one dose with the Pfizer vaccine, it's 52% uh, protection. And after the Moderna vaccine, I saw uh, some, a statistic that it was 80% protection after one dose. So that's what we're understanding now. Um, what's going on in Massachusetts? So I think in Massachusetts, we're, we're a, a bit smaller than Florida and we've, you know, we're 0.6% of our population being fully vaccinated. So I think there's, there have been some challenges because of the storage, et cetera, and other, you know, components of how we handle the vaccine. So I, you know, it's going to improve because we're gathering information about how to get it to people more. But I do think one thing we can be thinking about is how protected are you, you know, with these numbers between 55% with one dose versus 95%, um, regardless of the vaccine. But I think we also want to really be diligent about tracking the adverse events. And then there's an asterisk that we have to remember that the best scientists are saying that just because you got vaccinated doesn't mean you can't transmit. Can you speak to that? Yeah, sure. That I find that to be the most remarkable thing. And you know, I'm, I'm not sure that I understand that. I haven't really heard anybody explain that and I've looked extensively to understand it. But when you get a vaccine in your deltoid, in your arm, in your shoulder, um, you're basically activating from a different source as opposed to from it coming through your airway, right? Or your upper GI. So I think I'm not certain why the immunoglobulins and the natural killer cells and the secretory immunoglobulins don't protect you in the same way, but it may be that they have not seen the bug in the same type of dosing, you know, in terms of uh, quantity of, of uh, the bug, the viral load that's present there in the nose. So I'm not really sure. Um, and there's a lot of confusing data that have to do with people who get the vaccine and subsequently have positive nasal swabs. So we still have to stay uh, attentive to that and really understand what's going on with that. I like your hypotheses. And like, like we said, never before have we, we've been in medicine a long time, but we've never seen it evolve so quickly and change right. so rapidly, which is again, why we're hearkening back to why we're talking COVID again for the next five weeks. So thank you all for agreeing. You're happy with the topic. Yeah. Next slide. So we thought that we change it, the, um, format. the format so that you go ahead and email questions in and we will tighten up the answers the next time we meet. So we would invite you to send your emails in to fireemupdoctors at gmail.com. That's F-I-R-R-I-M up doctors at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing them, reading them. Thank you. Next slide. Yeah, so thanks for, for coming week after week. And for now, be safe, be well, and God bless you all. Audrey, great job. First time with us. Thank you, Audrey. Thanks for being here. And thank you all for being here. All right. Thank you so much to our Fire em Up doctors. Um, and now I'm going to quickly go over the specials we have with our supplements and then also our books. So the first one I want to mention is our Kick COVID-19 to, um, to the Curb book. And this is a perfect book to go along with the series that we were just talking about. They really go hand in hand. So I highly recommend getting that. And if you were to get it, you could either um, go and get it, the paperback in our office for $29.99. And then we also have it online for $9.99 on Amazon, Kindle, and then Barnes and Nobles, and then also Google Play. And if you haven't gotten Amazon Kindle before, your first book is actually free. So I highly recommend taking advantage of that. And if you go ahead and send us the confirmation of purchase, whether that be a screenshot or you email us a receipt, you can get 20% off the ultra potent vitamin C supplement and then also the zinc AG. And then next I'll go over our supplements. So all of these supplements are available at our Get Healthy store, which is on our Fire em Up website. And they all have an accompanying um, promotion code to get 10% off at, up until July or um, January 31st. So the first one I'm going to go over is our Ageless Triad, and that's going to be the curcumin, the liposomal vitamin C, and the glutathione. And if you use the promo code Fire em Up Ageless, that's Fire em Up A G E L E S S, you can go ahead and get 10% off of that. 
And then next we have our vitamin D pack. Um, so we have the mycelized D3 plus K2. And then we also have the D3 either in 2000 IU or 5000 IU. And you can use the promo code FIREMUPVITED, so that's V-I-T-D, to get 10% off of those. And again, that's at our Get Healthy store on the FIREMUP website. Um, next, we have our Immuno PRP spray, um, our zinc uh, capsules, and then our quercetin. So all of these are great for the immune system, and um, the Fire Up doctors will actually be going into these a bit more in the upcoming series and how they're perfect for fortifying your immune system through COVID. And so the promo code for the PRP is going to be Fire Up PRP, and that'll be for 10% off. Um, the one for zinc is Fire em Up Zinc, and again, 10% off, and Fire em Up Q for the quercetin. And again, all of those are on the Fire em Up website at the Get Healthy store. Um, next, we have two offerings for Omega. We have one that is a non-vegan version, and then one that is the vegan version. So the Pro Omega is the non-vegan version, and you can use the code Fire em Up Omega to get 10% off of that. And then for vegans, we have the algae omega, and you can use the code FIREMUPALGE to get 10% off. Um, next, we have the NO supplements, and we actually had a webinar whole series about that with Dr. Nathan Bryan, where he dove into that, and we know that Dr. Aki really recommends these. So we have them in the strips, the tablets, and then also the lozenges, and you can use the code FIREMUPHUMAN to get 10% off of any of those. Um, lastly, for our supplements, we have melatonin, and we have it in two different forms, the liquid form and then also the lozenges. And melatonin is awesome for sleep, and it's really good for um, immune system support as well throughout COVID. And you can use the code FIREMUPSLEEP to get 10% off of those. So now moving into our book offerings, this is Fine-Tune Your Hormone Symphony by Dr. Aki, and this really does a deep dive into regulating your hormones um, for your overall health. And that is available on our Fire em Up Doctors website. And then we also have a few paperback that are still in the office. So if you email um, fi the Fire em Up email that was in that Q&A slide, um, we can actually give it to you curbside. And then lastly, we have our fascia function and medical applications textbook also by Dr. Aki. Um, and we have the paperback copies in the NFIM office for $55 and you can do curbside pickup. And then that's also available on our Fire em Up Doctors website and then Amazon as well. So thank you guys so much um, for having me for my first webinar. And I really look forward to seeing you guys every Thursday, um, especially as we kick off this new series. So I'll see you guys next week. We're so glad you joined us today. We hope we've given you the tools to take control of your health. For more good medicine and information about any treatments, supplements, and resources discussed today, please visit us at www.firemobdoctors.com. That's F-I-R-R-I-M of doctors.com. And wherever you're listening from, remember to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels so you don't miss out. The information provided is not a substitute for professional medical advice. This should not be used to diagnose, treat, or manage health problems without consultation. If you do experience any of the symptoms discussed today, please contact your nearest healthcare professional.